with Mike Funny Bone. Check them out, man. They go hard already. They got uh, great talent. They off the chain. They That's hot. Good. They are hot. They are hot. That's why we the best. Little Mike and Funny Bone are pioneers here in Oklahoma. I think they've got a you know phenomenal shot at making it. Yeah, we ain't twins, and uh, we're five years apart, matter of fact. We got a pretty big family, Just two brothers and one sister. There's a brother between us. Everybody in the family is average height, except for us, and uh, we're five years apart. And, uh, we're mostly Native American, but um, we got a little bit of white, black, and Mexican in us. A lot of people don't know that. I went not very tall. I know you can't tell on camera right now, but I'm like 4'8. Mike is like 4'9. The way I grew up was um, uh, I remember an abusive father, and we were always trying to run away from him. It kind of pushed me away from everybody because I felt like and, that everybody's against me. I don't remember the dad because uh, I was younger. Mike, he kind of he kind of remembers our dad, but I mean, as far as I know, I mean, we were just raised by a single mom, and I give her props a lot because she did her best to always keep us out of trouble, but not to just always smother us with rules and stuff. We would always be able to come to her and let her know what was going through. So we would be scared, you know what I'm saying, because she was cool. I ran with the wrong crowds. Um, all the time in the streets. Uh, getting in fights because uh, that's all I knew. I saw my, my dad and my mom fighting and I was getting beat down. So that's what I was doing in school. Just fighting all the time. All the elementary schools be kicking me out and stuff. He he was um, severely emotionally disturbed. He got put into special classes for that. He had a lot of um, emotional problems, anger issues, and um, he got into fights a lot and arguments with his teachers. And I joined this dance class. They had like this morning thing to like get people creative and stuff and not join the dance class and that's what I liked. But you know, I always got in trouble. And my, one of my teachers said, Well, you don't get to go to that class and I got upset and I pushed that teacher down and then he sent the policeman in after me and I was in the class and the policeman came and was telling me that I need to go back to where I came from and I didn't like his tone of voice. <laughs> so I grabbed, well I tried to grab his gun and he turned me into like this suitcase, and carried me down the hall all the way to the office. And it was very embarrassing because everybody was standing outside the classroom and laughing. <laughs> and that basically, you know, I learned my lesson. I never really got a chance to see that. The gang violence or nothing like that or the fighting or nothing. He was just funny. He he would argue with his teachers but to make them laugh. He would, you know, to, he always made everybody laugh. I guess I can't remember how old I was, but I remember that my older brothers, him and our, our other brother, would take me to the mall and stuff. <laughs> they would they would go tell me like, hey, go get that girl's number. Because I, I, the baby baby face and whatnot, and you know, I guess just adorable. Uh, they made me go get girls' names. Um, that kind of stuck with me. She put up with me. Yeah, you were good. You were, and it was Mike that we had <coughs> issues with. They, all, I was at school like every day, every other day. The teachers all knew exactly who I was. And then when I got to high school, it was a little bit rougher because. Um, Everybody was involved with either a gang or uh, just like high school cliques. Running with the gangs, 
I learned my lesson pretty quick. Like, I was pretty smart. Like, they had me doing things, like, starting fights so they could finish it. And that was my favorite thing, was just getting in the fights because I was getting hit at home, so it didn't really bother me getting hit on the street. After that, man, if they're pretty big and strong, they, they can throw me around. One of the major things that made me turn my life around was just that one of my friends had got killed. That's when I really saw the, the whole, the full spectrum of being a gangster. And then I was like, man, hell no, I'm not dying for no color. I'd rather die for something else, but I wouldn't die for no color. I, I tried to motivate people to do the right thing when I was in school, but, um, it was a little harder in, in, in high school for me to do that when everybody kind of just looked at me as the little Michael Jackson dancer. I got my name Little Mike because I used to dance like Michael Jackson and I'm little. And he had the hair and he could wear it like Michael and um, he, there was like a, a unity day at his school and he would always watch the videos and he would tape them and he could do the dances and so one day for that that day he had this little poem and this little performance and we dressed him like Mike and it, it just you know it just kind of stuck <laughs> When I was younger, um, about high school, I just reached the age of 18. My birthday passed just like that. Um, I had got arrested for stealing CDs. He's so into music and into, you know, all of that, you know, and, and at the time we didn't really have a lot of, um, you know, money. and. He just, you know, he slipped a little, but <laughs> he got caught and it was for the best. Went to jail, to downtown. They fingerprinted me, they took pictures, they asked was I in a gang and all that stuff. And I was so scared. In middle school, I was a... Uh, you were the class clown. Yeah, I was the class clown, clown type of person. Um, that's kind of why, uh, how I got my name, um, Funny Bone, because that's just kind of who I am, I'm the funny person. He had certain teachers that he liked to kind of irritate and make jokes with and just kind of say a little, he was the class clown, and I think there was one teacher in particular that he got a real big kick out of just seeing how far he could get under his skin. My teacher, he went outside and he blew his nose into this tissue. And then he came back in the room and he looked at the ground and he took the tissue and he wiped the ground. And I said, ooh, you just wiped your wiggle on the floor. He, he got mad. He said, all right, that's it. You go to the office. I was like, oh, God. When I started acting right, I just wanted to motivate people to not live that kind of lifestyle. And if there's a better way to live, um, that you can live a positive life and, and still have fun, and then uh, just start going to church more. I was just really glad that he found something that, you know, he was really interested in that, that wasn't, you know, leading him down the wrong way. We were still the good people, but we was getting kicked out of church because we were so wild because we have a different way of loving our God, I guess what you could say. We love God, we love on God differently than most people do. Not all like <laughs> crying and screaming uh, the way they do. So they don't, they don't think it's sincere. They don't think it's real. <laughs> Our church is just different from a suit and tie church. We wear regular clothes and we break dance and we mosh pit, and it's just something that um, addresses our our faith through the culture that we are in now, and not just the same 
robotic church, how everybody else is doing church right now. So. Come on, back, go, 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 back, back, Where I started out rapping is I used to write poetry. And one time we went to a high school or a middle school and we, they had me do a poem and I did it to a beat. And this little kid came up and said that he liked uh, he liked my rap. And then they just kind of put a thought in my head like I should probably try to rap. You know, that's my big brother, bro. That's my older brother. <laughs> and uh, so, just kind of looking up to him and wanting to be in whatever he was doing. Damn, Mike and Funny Bone, they was doing that thing, back clipping and break dancing. So I met them battling, um, battle rapping. They um, put on a really good show. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about how great of a show they put on. Um, there's a huge amount of stage presence, which isn't something that most artists uh, have. A lot of artists have a lot of talent, but they don't also have a stage presence. A relationship with our fans is uh, really different from a lot of Oklahoma artists and in, in both sides, like Christian and non-Christian, because we we like to keep in contact with our fans. There are the advantages that you have over other artists. Is that your more hiding spots? Very true. <laughs> but that it, it is your size because you because your size. In the Luggage. People remember seeing you. You're you're so much more noticeable. People actually remember. Oh yeah, I saw y'all somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I don't care if they're staring at us because we're short. Um, unless like, I, I just don't like the ones that act scared. Like oh my god, they look like Chucky dolls. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they're just kind of like, wow, there's two of them. You know, I, I, it, that's. The only, that's the only thing I'll be like, oh, why are you staring at me like I'm a zoo animal? The church we go to is a little bit different. It's called Bringing the Fire. And um, a lot of people don't really like it because it's not traditional type. It's more it's more modern. Yeah, it's actually the first performance of the year for us. And I always want them guys to be here because they've been loyal to us and they've been faithful to God um, in what they do. And so because of that meeting that night, uh, like I said, three, three and a half years ago, they're still here. And we thank God for them, for sure. We love God and we party. Mm -hmm. Basically, we praise God. Yeah. And praise is an action word. So don't say that I was in my seat and I was praising God. Yeah. One of the main things that I like about Mike and Bone music is that it has a lot of the innovative beats that students talk about. Normally when students mention the hip-hop artists of the day, they say what? We like the music. And although that may be true, unfortunately, a lot of the worldly and unwholesome themes aren't necessarily filtered. Personally, I, I love the music that they put together because uh, it, uh, it ministers uh, on so many different levels. Uh, people young, old, you know, you can always listen to that music with, uh, you know, your, your grandma or your nephew or niece in the same room, you know, and they, they've really been a blessing uh, to me. 
the churches, the establishments, the religious establishments, they need the mics and the funny bones. Cause sometimes you like, oh, they off limits. They got these little rules you don't want to deal with. And they open it up to be okay to go play a guitar and rock out at the church. So they probably getting a lot of people to come in and be involved in that. We have a booth that opens at Flea Market. It's called 405 Music. And uh, now we've been at our, we've been had our own booth for about two to three years, somewhere around like that. They the ones who really incorporated getting everybody, anybody in the underground scene in Oklahoma had a CD up in there. They buying it from you if they hide, they can sign it for you. So they've been part of a large movement for a long time. We work for a company right now uh, where we go to different high schools and middle schools and we we uh, talk to the kids about Jesus and life situations and we feed them pizza for free during lunch. It's an on-campus club and uh, the kids can come if they want or if they don't want to, they don't have to. Normally the response that I get from students that speak about Mike and Bone is that they enjoy their presence. Um, by and large, the students uh, are very appreciative of the work that they do. And I think many of the students that you speak to will attest to the positive impact that Mike and Bone are making in their lives and in their community. Your relationship can be the best when Christ is in it, and both partners look to him for fulfillment not in each other. It will fail if you leave love out. God is love. I'm very proud of him. Very proud of him. Every little flower needs a drop of water. Every little dream could be a reality. I know someone who could take your hopes much further it's more than a dream give it to the father I give it to the father with my hands raised to the ceiling your love revealing and i'm not chilling i got the spirit deep inside yeah their hands high and i gotta give my praise up to the Father and that cries, the spirit, the sun is coming down like rain. And I gotta feel it no more, crying no more that pain. It's just me and that one, yeah, that love is true. And y'all didn't know that Jesus Christ got that love that is true. No more faking that funk, no more talking that junk. Just raise your hands on up, show that Jesus Christ that love. You know you really love him, go ahead and reach and touch him. You gotta put your hands up in the air. And catch that loving, hey, he got it for you, and he's waiting on you. And I'ma come in this thing with that spirit stronger. Yeah, I keep on singing. Yeah, he keep on bringing that love is coming through. Yeah, watch me as I'm gleaming.